Okay, uh, so for today, we'll be going over a couple of the AP uh, sort of passages, right, that we'll be going on for today. Um, so <clears throat> once again, uh, we'll be taking a look at a uh, couple of the passages, right, question two, question three, right, uh, where we will be going over the novel by Nathaniel Hawthorne, uh, who would have uh, written a lot of letters to uh, Moby Dick's, uh, Herman Melville, who wrote Moby Dick, so they would have, uh, again, you might have heard of it, but they would have been great friends who wrote letters to one another, and they inspired and uh, gave ideas for each other's books, right, and so uh, we'll be reading uh, the book uh, sort of excerpt uh, by Nathaniel Hawthorne, who also wrote the Scarlet Letter, right, for the uh, sort of stigma around the sort of uh, topic of stigma, right, that uh, <clears throat> the uh, sort of uh, the book would have been about in the uh, sort of English uh, sort of uh, setting, right, that uh, the book would have been about, about some uh, sort of stigma uh, that it would have been about, about uh, those topics, right about, uh, yeah, topics of uh, stigma and the scarlet, right, being sort of uh, <clears throat> uh, put on the character, right? Um, so again, uh, it will look very similar to like an IB passage, right, that you'll be working on. And so like, <clears throat> you'll be taking a look at, right, uh, these literary devices, right, uh, like uh, the time frames like past and present, right, that we have, again, uh, sort of uh, condescending, criticism, again, complacence of C alliteration or E alliteration and doubt and different exercise, right? Those types of sort of alliteration that you might see for emphasis, right? That we might be able to find or uh, <clears throat> community who assumes a, a leadership position. And so again, uh, sort of uh, juxtaposition that we might be able to see here as well with may violently uh, be held the true character, <clears throat> but next uh, instant, and so some irony that we might be able to feel, uh, be able to see uh, some simplicity that we might be able to find a uh, perfect sense, too powerful, uh, yet uh, passionate, luxurious, lacking simplicity, not refined, incapable of pure perfect taste, but the next instant she was too powerful. And so again, some uh, sort of opposing uh, sort of characteristics about her that we might be able to find, right? Uh, sort of contrasting, seemingly contrasting at some point, right? Uh, but also reflective and analyzing of the nature of the community, right? That we'll be able to find. So conversations being sort of uh, put together, right? Those two characters that we see, right? Um, that we have that adds more sort of vigor or uh, vit vitality or uh, sort of... Uh, 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 more energy to the uh, sort of uh, the scene as well, right? They might be able to see. And uh, so again, like the eyes, cheeks, right? That we find the blood, heart, right? The self, uh, sort of the uh, features of the face that we might be able to find, which are <clears throat> like synecdoche or parts of the whole, so representing the whole. But again, her personali personalization and also uh, through the features, right? The physical features that we might be able to see here as well. But again, we see more like C class, Circumcised, circumscribed characters coolly, right? Uh, poor, possibly pity, right? So the P alliteration, the C alliteration, right? That we might be able to find that these sort of uh, terms would uh, sort of add more uh, sort of rhythm or emphasis to the, uh, to the sort of scenery, right? To the scene as well, right? That we might be able to find, right? So again, <clears throat> a lot of uh, literary devices, right? That we might be able to see, right? Uh, with these lamps, lights, radiance, chandelier, right? Uh, with sort of the uh, uh, vibrance or uh, sort of the light, right? Uh, the lu luminosity, right, of the room that we might be able to find with some of the furniture that will be set. And so again, these sort of features that we might be able to see uh, of the beauty, elegance, ornament, elegance, right? That we might be able to see, right? That are being used to portray this sort of scenery. Right, that we might have been able to find, but right, with the actress, right, that we would be able to see in conversations in the sort of uh, dreamlike state, right, dream that we might be able to see, right, in this uh, passage, right, that we'll have been able to find, right. 
Okay, uh, so the next uh, sort of question that we have would be based on the uh, <clears throat> question three, right, which would be sort of more thematic based and also we'll be choosing text from the given sort of works that we have to answer the question, right, that will be provided, right, with the question three uh, types that we have, right. And here they ask us to talk about a literal or a figurative gift at this point, which can be like a social position, uncommon beauty, great mental or imaginative faculties or extraordinary physical powers that we might have. And sometimes this gift might be seen as a burden or a handicap, whereas it could be an advantage at many times, or it could be a problem at times as well, right? And so how could gifts serve as, a, as, as an advantage and a problem at the same time? We'll try to sort of explore those elements in some of the uh, novels, right? We'll, we'll be taking a look at. And so maybe to start us off with, we might take a look at uh, Frankenstein, which would be one of the novels, right? They'll be uh, <clears throat> sort of providing for us, right? That we'll be able to see the Frankenstein that we have. And uh, with Frankenstein, it would have been written by Mary Shelley and the monster created by Victor Frankenstein, right? One of the sort of uh, characteristics about that monster would be sort of the sentimentality that the monster has, right? Uh, sort of ironically or surprisingly enough, uh, which allows the monster to form relationships and bonds even with the human beings in the world, right? Uh, uh, which serves as a advantage, right, in the sense that he, uh, the monster, can form relationships with the people, and uh, keen eyes and astute innocence, right, allows him to navigate society in a different light, allow interactions with, uh, with the uh, sort of uh, characters, right, that we might be able to find. Uh, but one of the one of the problems might be the uh, sort of uh, student sense of uh, invention, science, scientific skills, and nature. Uh, but again, uh, one of the problems might be that uh, that the the gift of being able to form the bonds, right, but not uh, necessarily might not be reciprocated by the people who might not understand uh, sort of the. Uh, perspective or uh, sort of the uh, the uh, shoes uh, or the perspective of the monster itself, right? And so again, that could be a gift and a re unreciprocated sort of uh, relationship, right? That we might be able to see. Uh, the other sort of uh, <clears throat> well-known or famous sort of uh, novel would be uh, Crime and Punishment, written by Dostoevsky, right, where Raskolnikov, again, he's also very astute, right, just uh, graduated out of college, and uh, he would have a sort of uh, astute understanding of the world as well, which allows him to uh, see the world, right, in a, a sort of different kind of light, allowing interactions with Sonia and other characters and form genuine deep interactions and relationships with characters, allowing to uh, him to write a classic of uh, all times, right? To provide the astute perspective of an outlook on life. Uh, but nonetheless, he has some uh, also uh, sort of uh, questions about sort of the injustices about society, right? And the landlady of the Ele Eleona Ivanova, uh, sort of the dream of the horse. And so those gifts about his sort of uh, sharp astuteness might come as a sort of handicap in some sense, right? That he might be overly sensitive to some of the uh, elements of the society, right? They might be able to see as well, right? And then, uh, and then, uh, which causes him to lose uh, interest in some parts of the society, right? That Sonia sort of brings him uh, him back for. But again, some of the handicap or problems that we might face. Again, uh, there are other characters where uh, sort of the gift serves both as a as an advantage and potentially a problem in some sense. And <clears throat> beloved. Um, Tony Moore in Tony Morrison's *Beloved* as well, uh, the main uh, character, right, uh, would be uh, uh, <clears throat> the mother, right? The sensitivity of the mother, her bravery, courage, right, saving the daughter. Uh, but uh, the relationship with Paul D, right, uh, 
yet uh, her sort of uh, sort of sensitivity or sentimentality becoming too extravagant or overwhelming or overwrought in a sense, right? Uh, in that uh, sense of attachment to the daughter might be a little extravagant, uh, negatively impacting her life in some sense, right? And not be able to have her life as a, as a woman, uh, her sort of womanhood, right? But her life, uh, which is yet later compensated with the relationship she has with Paul D, right? So the sense of sort of uh, extra, uh, again, sort of energy, uh, the energy is redirected, a little energy is redirected to uh, Paul, Paul D, right? The character who uh, serves as a uh, uh, conduit or outlet for her sort of libido energy, right? And uh, will be able to sort of gain a sense of attachment uh, uh, with Paul D, right? The sense of uh, the redirection of her libido energy, right? They might be able to find. And then um, uh, the other uh, characters might be uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, metamorphosis that we find, which is again a very uncanny sort of. Uh, Novel that we might be able to find, but again, uh, the uh, the main character would be again a German novel, but a main character turned into a bug, right, uh, in a very sort of uncanny manner, whereas the whole family dynamics would be uh, sort of shifted because of the very uncanny event, right, the uh, man turning into bug, right, and uh, it would be again uh, <clears throat> his uh, curiosity and intellectual sort of uh, demeanor, but uh, serving to be uh, uh, sort of detrimental in some sense, right? That we might be able to find in this sort of uh, in this sort of uh, uh, novel, right? As well, right? That we might be able to find. Uh, and also, uh, <clears throat> one of the characters that uh, we might be able to find might be uh, in King Lear. There would be three daughters who serve to who try to gain the appreciation of their father, right? And that uh, King Lear has the uh, right to inheritance, to inherit his sort of, uh, his, uh, his land and his uh, sort of kingdom to his uh, daughters. And two would be obsequious in that they would try to uh, live up to the expectations of the father, whereas one would be sort of uh, outspoken and outright sort of uh, in some sense, right? Uh, which could be a gift in that uh, she is outspoken and brave in certain ways, but that, uh, but that might serve uh, to be not always so helpful, right? Uh, whereas in the end, uh, of it, uh, eventually her sort of uh, true intentions would be uh, would be understood and accepted. But again, the kind of uh, complexity when it comes to right how uh, sort of strength might be. Uh, in some ways, a weakness and a weakness in this as a strength in some sense. So again, that sort of unclear binary sort of division between a strength and a weakness, right? That we might be able to find here, gift and uh, the ungiftedness or gift uh, and the handicap, right? That we might be able to find. Where handicap might be a gift, gift might be a handicap in some sense, right? And that the binary division is not as clear, right? That we might be able to find. Um, and the other uh, novel that we have would be, uh, again, uh, The uh, Tempest, whereas, again, the sense of bravery when it comes to valor, right, that it could be, uh, it could be uh, sort of uh, overly sort of uh, uh, outwardly put, outwardly sort of shown, whereas uh, it would be able to break through and move through in some sense, but again, uh, might be a handicap if, if it comes to uh, to be in a lot of ways, right? It, too excessive is something, if, if it's uh, uh, sort of beyond the limits of something, right? That it could always serve as a sort of uh, a sort of double-edged sword in some sense. And so the right amount of something, right? When it comes to even the attachment or sentimentality or whatever that may be, right? That we would, might be focusing on, right? Even intelligence, right? As in some sense, right? Um, and uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the sort of final sort of final uh, novel that we'll take a look at for this sort of particular uh, sort of topic might be Heart of Darkness, written by Joseph Conrad. Uh, who talks about uh, Marlowe and Kurt, right? The sort of 
um, uh, mysterious characters, right? We might be able to find, whereas Kurt has this gift of uh, uh, adapting or adjusting himself to the natives of the uh, of the uh, of uh, the uh, of Africa, right? That he becomes so part of the uh, sort of African community and gets married to an African woman that he is sort of alienated from the rest of society, right? That his sort of uh, sense of uh, identity might be like. Uh, maybe too blurred in some sense, which allows him to become an exotic character who is fascinated, who uh, is characterized to be the fascination of abomination or uh, to be a source of fascination for a lot of people. But in a sense, right, uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, the uh, sort of uh, being <clears throat> uh, too sort of uh, segregated and or alienated from the Western society to be part of the African society, again, could be seen as a problem and a, and a gift, right, in a certain sense, right, that we might be able to find, right? And again, uh, Marlowe being uh, perhaps uh, too attached or curious to Kurt might, again, uh, the idea of him uh, sort of uh, 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 looking up to and uh, being fascinated by Kurt could be seen also as a positive sort of trait, but at, at the same time, right, his uh, sort of fascination of abomination or uh, sort of overly attached sort of, uh, uh, sort of nature uh, towards Kurt, Kurt right, um, uh, of the uh, uh, fascination of abomination, right, also could be seen as a handicap in some sense, right, his uh, sort of uh, uh, undetachable sort of, right, uh, the side, kind of uh, attachment and the fascination that he might be feeling towards Kurt as well, right? That we might be able to see. Um, again, uh, we'll take a look at one more sort of example of question three, right? That we might be able to find, right? <clears throat> so we'll take a look at these, uh, this sort of uh, question where we'll take a look at a uh, question where uh, we'll take a look at some of the characters from like novels, plays, or poems where the origins are unusual or mysterious. So we often do have characters who seem a little bit under the veil, where right, in some sense that, that th their origins may be a little unusual or mysterious in some sense, right? They might be able to find. And uh, great examples might be Waiting for Godot, where uh, Samuel Beckett would have written this text, where Godot, right, for instance, would be, uh, who are we waiting for, right? The sort of mysterious uh, sort of symbol or character here might be, are we waiting for some kind of uh, 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 religious character or savior, right? Which character, right? And so again, the sort of mystery of the unusualness of that Godot, right? That we are waiting for is uh, uh, foreshadowed and illusion, right? Uh, 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 given illusion to, right? In this text, right? That we might be able to find. Also, uh, the Wuthering Heights also has like the household, the woman and the man, right? The British setting, the characters and the setting itself is a little sort of uh, mysterious or behind the uh, veil, right? A little uh, mysterious in some sense, right? That we might be able to find, right? In Wuthering Heights as well. Uh, again, their eyes were watching God. Again, some idea of unusualness, mysterious uh, sort of uh, 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 atmosphere or spooky sort of sense, right, with the Civil War and the Black Rights, right, that we might be able to find here as well. And uh, <clears throat> the metamorphosis, again, uh, which would be uh, uh, very much central when it comes to unusualness, right, with the character turning into a bug, right, of the greatest mystery, a German novel, right, that we might be able to find here as well. And Lady Macbeth and Macbeth, right, also then becoming sort of the king and queen, right, and that the mystery of these characters and the sort of uh, a mystery that they go through, right, that we might be able to see here as well. And Jane Eyre, right, the mysterious wife in the dungeon that we find, where uh, why Sergesso C would have been uh, sort of a narrative about that mystery or a response to Jane Eyre, who that mysterious woman in the dungeon, wife in the dungeon would have been about. But again, that sort of uh, unusual or uh, mysterious character that we might be able to find. Uh, Iliad, again, uh, would be... Um, sort of the hero, right, with the mysterious sort of origin. Again, all heroes have the sort of sense of uh, sort of mystical sort of uh, origin in some sense, right, and the sort of heroic battles and the journey, right, uh, epic poem, uh, epic journey that uh, the uh, main character right, would be going on uh, at this point, right, they might be able to find. 
And then uh, Frankenstein also has this sort of unusual mystery sense as well, <clears throat> with uh, sort of the uh, novel being a futuristic novel in that it will be prediction about cloning or sort of uh, future advancements, right, in technology, right, and science that we might be able to find, right, with the uh, sort of uh, the uh, scientists, right, the mass scientists sort of uh, creating a monster or sort of the uh, the cloning, clone of himself, right, and that uh, <clears throat> the scientist predicts that, or, or uh, the uh, the uh, the monster, the scientist create the monster right, who comes to have revenge on him. But again, the unusual and the mysterious sense, right? But the technological uh, uh, about predictions about the future and the technological advances and scientific advances that the novel will be drawing at this point, right? Mary Shelley would be drawing at this point. Again, uh, English patient being the love story between uh, sort of the mystery of the characters that we might be able to find, right? Again, uh, a love story with the uh, the element of mystery being uh, put out there. Again, uh, with beloved, there would be the mystery of the uh, the uh, <clears throat> of the uh, the household itself, right? Being hunted in some sense with the death of the baby and the mother grieving for the absence of the baby, right? They might be able to find. And uh, Brave New World, which would be uh, in uh, a lot of ways similar to what uh, the uh, uh, what uh, Frankenstein would have been about, about sort of the uh, predictions about the future that we might be able to find, right? And that it would be about uh, sort of the uh, the scientists and the monster, right? Predictions about cloning and science, scientific advancement once again, right? Like, like 1984, where it would have been about uh, sort of uh, the big brother and the government, what the, what the future of the government will look like with 1984 and Brave New World would be more about the scientific sort of advancements, right? How the world would look with the uh, scientific and technological advances and cloning, right? And uh, sort of the unusual and the mysterious sort of uh, uh, ambient and the uh, the atmosphere, the environment that these characters would be in as well, right? That we might be able to find. And then, oh, and then uh, the next uh, <clears throat> uh, sort of question or uh, prompt, right? That uh, the question, right? Uh, in uh, section two, right? Uh, in English literature, right? They might be able to find for AP, right? Might be. Uh, the Myth of Music, which would be a poem written by Harper, right, that we might be able to find, right, uh, like elements like imagery, form, tone, right, that we might be able to find here as well, uh, the relationship between music and the complex memories of her family, as we were told, right, uh, so the <clears throat> title of the poem would be The Myth of the Music, right, with the M, right, capitalized in both of myth and the music, right, and so given the sort of significance in that, uh, the music and the myth, right? That would be well. And for my father, right? Again, the M alliteration, F alliteration to have rhythm, right? And the rhyme, uh, the rhythm to it, right? Emphasis, right? They might be able to find with these uh, alliterations, right? They might be able to find. And again, how music has to do with the sort of culture and the inheritance of the family, right? And also ambience of the family and the uh, the dynamics of the family, right? That we might be able to find here as well, right? That we'll take a look, right? With the memories of the uh, family, right? That we might be able to uh, take a look. And here uh, we're told <clears throat> the brown eyes, right? Uh, the inheritance, linear trace through title track. Again, sort of the T alliterations and more smooth transition and emphasis, right? That we might be able to find. Uh, November of time being put here, right? That we were able to find. Uh, brother dealing with uh, uh, sort of cards, right? Art history, lineage, right? Uh, the inheritance of the family, right? Trace, right? A the title track, right? They might be able to find. Along with that, we have uh, the family collective memory, the texture, tones, voice, horn, listening, singing, songs, lyrics, songs. So a lot of uh, sort of uh, uh, diction or words to do with music as well, right? Singing, listening, the movement in the present, right? They might be able to find, right? <clears throat> and also the sort of motherly nature. My mother, this uh, 200 miles away, right? Home, moment, security, footsteps, warmth, right? All these sort of feelings of the in the alliteration that we find, motherly, warmth, spirit and love that we find, security, comfort, of home of music. So held in that motherly nature, right? That we might be able to find, right? So present 
the motherly presence, uh, sort of uh, so vivid and present, even in the midst of the physical distance that uh, she might be at, right? And so again, that overwhelming sort of sense of the uh, presence of the mother, right, that we might be able to find, right? Music as a family inheritance that we find, which could be inherited, family inheritance, cultural tradition, pinned to the wall, sealed into the groves, right, engraved, recorded, uh, the musical diction of horn, voice, singing, listening songs, lyrics, recording, playing, right, that we might be able to find. Uh, the personal pronouns of these sort of uh, famous sort of uh, music, right, that we find, the myths of music, the giant steps of the album, right, that we find here as well, uh, which also helps to, uh, uh, the personal names, right, which also helps to put more sort of emphasis on this music and also give more personality and sort of emphasis or significance in uh, sort of uh, elevating the significance, right, myth of the music. Oh, capitalize, right? Uh, given the uh, sort of uh, the significance, right, of music that we might be able to find here as well. Again, memories of the family, right, that we find here, imagery, form, uh, sort of tone, right, that we find, right? Uh, sound, chords, speakers, multiphonics, right, all of the sound, right, sensory details that we are able to find here as well, music, jazz, chords, accompaniment. Words like uh, sort of nostalgia, rhythm, memories, childhood, lullaby, saxophone, music, right, universal, the universality of music, all these notes singing, a sort of a tone and a voice, right, uh, with sort of these uh, sort of sounds, right, creating some kind of ambience, right, and also music to it, right, harmony, right, uh, sort of bringing the whole family together, right, this sort of sense of warm comfort, right, this whole uh, sort of warm ambience of the music, right, that we might be able to find here as well, right, with the sort of fa uh, family sort of coming together, right, and the inheritance, right, the overwhelming sort of uh, presence and the uh, sort of uh, spirit, right, and present, right, of the family and music, right, that we might be able to find here as well, right, so again, a lot of imagery, diction, right, music, uh, uh, form, right, that we might be able to explore, uh, sort of describing the ambience of the family and also the inheritance of the family being embodied, right, in the, uh, the, the uh, sort of uh, <clears throat> the uh, symbol of music, right, that we might be able to find here as well, right. Uh, the next poem that we have would be on the topic of plant, right, a poem uh, by Olive Senior who wrote about uh, the plant and we would look at uh, the, uh, the relationships between the speaker, the implied audience and plant life and we'll take a look at syntax, diction and figurative language when it comes to plant, right, that we might be able to find the topic of plants here that we might be able to find. Uh, plants are deceptive, right? They tell us, right? And so we'll take a look at uh, some of the uh, imagery and also the diction here. Uh, rooted, right? Uh, leaving traces, not like uh, animals like us, right? And so uh, sort of lowering themselves in certain sense, but superiority of the plants over the animals or humans that are being portrayed here, right? That they're uh, sort of rooted, roots in the air, uh, but again, uh, unlike the animals, right? So it's a little more uh, sort of elegant maybe uh, than the uh, animals in, so, in certain sense in that uh, there would be like <clears throat> punctuation or tone of voice, diversity and tone that we might be able to find some rhetorical questions that sort of the voice and also to, uh, to engage the reader at some point, uh, the roots in the air, again, the shoes, right? Uh, so <clears throat> again, uh, that uh, sort of word choices or addiction that we might be able to find. Uh, some enjambments that we find. So some of the sentences sort of continue towards the next stanza, right? They might be able to find. So cut off or indentation in these lines, right? They start to add more casual tone, conversational in style, engaging with the audience, right? Conversation engaged with that of a friend, right? That we might be able to find, right? Question and answer, question and answer, right? We might be able to find that sort of conversational style here, right? That we might be able to find. The intonation of voice, right? The punctuation, tone, voice, diversity in tone, the intonation up and down, up and down, right? That we might be able to find. 
And then uh, the simile and the metaphors, right? The armies of mangrove from the march, roots in the air, were full of shoots, then the conquest, invasive siblings so of an army, right? That we find our plants sort are of likened to an army of a sort of uh, metaphor, right? Simile metaphor that we were able to find, right? Given that sort of sense of uh, 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 elevated sense of uh, importance or significance that we might be able to find here as well, right? Again, perishing seeds and other airborne traffic uh, sort of uh, dropping. Uh, we do see, again, rhetorical questions, right? Uh, sort of questions to engage the readers. Uh, <clears throat> bats, birds, bees, right? The alliteration, the diversity in the organisms that we might be able to find. And also some capitalism, right? Of the innocence, right? Of the sweet fruit, right? That comes right with the plant, right? Plan progeny part program p, p alliteration again to add emphasis and the rhythm and also to emphasize sort of the plant right the p alliteration that we might be able to find and the rhyme and rhythm to see the uh, the original profligate extremely reckless and probably so again the uh, sort of extravagance of things right that we might be able to find and uh, sort of the uh, roots, shoots, flower seed, weed, bats, birds, bees gathered around, hovering around these plants. A little bit of sort of uh, flora and fauna, right, that we might be able to see, right, surrounding the nature of plants, right, that we might be able to find here as well. Right, plants are deceptive. Again, uh, some of the uh, characteristics about plants, right, that we might be able to find here as well, right. Uh, personified in some sense, right, given sort of characteristics of uh, beyond sort of the uh, non-human sort of uh, state, but also given sort of some of the personal personified characteristics and uh, it's sort of importance put in some kind of a pedestal, right, that I might be able to find uh, with the uh, sort of uh, uh, endowment and also sort of the elaborate sort of uh, the elegant sort of description that we might be able to find here as well. Uh, the next uh, uh, assignment or question that we have would be uh, a novel written by now Paul, Magical Seeds, where uh, he would have said, or he would have written, it is wrong to have an ideal view of the world. That's where the mischief starts, that's where everything starts unraveling. So again, uh, <clears throat> is having a positive outlook about the world, is ideal view of the world seen as naive or uh, is it idealism uh, without sort of uh, backing or is it, uh, does it have positive or negative consequences, right? So we do take a look at, uh, we do think of the positive outlook on life as a positive trait, but sometimes it can be, it can potentially have some negative consequences, right? That the writer would be talking about. And so where does that fine line bit of the idealism, right? And re, uh, re, re, reality, right? Uh, real, realism or reality, right? Where does that fine line, right? Sort of uh, lie, right? The author would be sort of wanting us to uh, ponder and think about. And uh, <clears throat> we'll take a look at a couple of the texts, right? In order to explore uh, what the fine line between sort of the uh, overly out or outright uh, sort of idealism might lie with sort of the reality that we also have to consider, right, as we sort of uh, navigate these texts and also in our uh, everyday lives, right, that we might also have to juggle with, right, that we might be able to see as well, right? Uh, so a good example or a place to start might be To Kill a Mockingbird, right, which you all <coughs> might have read or will be reading. And uh, there will be characters like Scout and Jem, right, the children and youth in the Macon County that we find, where they're, they have idealistic, right, views about the society, along with Atticus, who, uh, who ha at least has the license to advocate the rights of the Black people, right, but that uh, they're sort of discovery of the adult world might be discouraging and disappointing at times, right? As Hart believed, the author tries to shed sort of positive light even in the midst of the melancholy tone and voice of the historical era. But again, right? So that the outright uh, sort of idealistic, uh, sort of youthful uh, ideas or uh, viewpoints of Scout and Gem might be sort of uh, uh, highlighted uh, or uh, or uh, compared in some sense to the uh, sort of more realistic sort of uh, handling of the situation that Atticus might have, right? Although they are both uh, positive in their outlooks, right? Their sort of uh, handling of the reality or the situation might vary in, uh, in their 
uh, in their uh, experiences that they have had with the society and uh, the sort of uh, the set of experiences that they would have had with the uh, uh, with the age right that they might be at right and uh, <clears throat> again that would be uh, that will sort of serve as a contrast right in some sense right that how idealistic views of the society how it comes uh, in hand with the sort of realistic sort of views about society right that we might be able to explore here uh, in the text as well right, with To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, the next text that we might be able to uh, sort of consider or explore might be uh, <clears throat> The Great Gatsby, written by F. Scott Fitzgerald, again, which would be about sort of the idealistic views or outlooks on life about the American dream, right, and at the time where F. F. Scott Fitzgerald would have wanted to write uh, sort of a social commentary about the uh, American dream and how people would have uh, with the golden California gold rush, right? And also how people would have had sort of the ideals of the American dream, uh, but he would have wanted to sort of uh, show the disillusioned uh, 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 or at least sort of the disillusioned sort of aspects of the American dream that we might be able to find, right? With uh, <clears throat> Gatsby becoming a millionaire, right? Uh, only to win the heart of Daisy, only to find that he, uh, she would have already ma been married to another man, right? Uh, to, uh, to, uh, yeah, to come to terms with the reality and also to this illusion of the American dream and how that would have been uh, sort of the uh, commentary, social commentary of Scott uh, Vistro's commentary about the American dream, right, that we might be able to find, and also the balance or the uh, the sort of uh, war, tug of war, right, or uh, <clears throat> sort of the balance between uh, reality and idealism, right, that we might be able to sort of take a look at here as well, right, uh, sort of the disillusionment of the American dream, right, that we might be able to find. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so a couple more texts that we might be able to find might be uh, the catcher in the right might be also a good example of uh, how the youthful sort of sense of uh, the uh, sense of idealism might be uh, shattered in some sense with the uh, puberty and the outgrowing of the, uh, uh, the teenagers as they mature and grow up. They uh, realize like Scout and Jem in uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, right, that uh, <clears throat> uh, they would only uh, grow up to realize about the reality of the uh, the uh, sort of the world, right? And uh, uh, Holden Caulfield, right, the main character of the novel, right, of uh, the catcher in the rye will be trying to protect his sister, his uh, his sister Phoebe, right, protect her uh, from the society, right, of the society at the uh, fragility of being magnified against the reality, right, that he would be disillusioned at certain times, right, of the uh, the sort of uh, the uh, the failure that he faces in terms of uh, protecting his sister from uh, from uh, opening her eyes to the reality of the world, right? Uh, in becoming the catcher in the right, right? Uh, in failing to be the catcher in the right, right? Of his own sister, right? And so the disillusionment of uh, sort of puberty right, might be some of the sort of recurring themes in many of the classics of the literature that many of the authors might have uh, sort of explored in works like To Kill a Mockingbird, right? The Catcher in the Rye, right? That we might be able to see as well. In some aspects, The Great Gatsby, but in a uh, sort of uh, older sort of uh, age frame that we might be able to find as well, right? Uh, the other book, uh, <clears throat> a good example to uh, that uh, to explore might be uh, The Blue Side by uh, Toni Morrison, where uh, 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 Toni Morrison would have written about uh, the main character of The Blue Side would be Piccola, right, <clears throat> who would be uh, the main character of the novel where uh, she would desire, where she would come to desire the blue star in the world where she would come to develop an unrealistic understanding of the world, an ideal view of the world, where coming into the desire, coming into desire the blue sky that the uh, that she would want to have, right? Looking at uh, sort of uh, celebrities like uh, uh, the uh, celebrities uh, <clears throat> like uh, 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 on the uh, sort of uh, 
like Mary Shelley or uh, sort of celebrities on uh, cups or uh, sort of, uh, or uh, many of the advertisements, right, that they would be in, right? And the binaries of sort of white and black racial issues would be dealt here as well, right? They might be able to find, right? So again, right? Uh, sort of the racial issues that we might be able to find of Toni Morrison, right? Their opening of the black girl, right? Of the opening of her eyes to the reality, right? And uh, no longer holding sort of that ideal uh, vision or that sort of blue sky might be the ideals that she has, right? That is shattered by the uh, the coldness of the society and the coldness of the reality of the society, right? That we might be able to see here as well, right? That we one of the significant uh, sort of uh, aspects of reality versus ideal, ideal sort of nature, ideal sense, right? That we might be able to find uh, with this topic as well, right? Um, <clears throat> again, uh, Again, uh, Sound and the Fury would also be in a great example where William Faulkner will be the main author of this uh, sort of book where Quentin would have graduated from Harvard to return to his hometown. And the chapters and the parts would be divided into four parts and perspectives where it's written from the perspective or the uh, voice of many of the different characters. And one of the central themes of this book would also be about the disillusionment of the historical segregation and the civil war and the racial issues that are to be about the uh, this disillusionment, right? Understanding and learning of the Harvard education, the elite Ivy League education, yet reality of his hometown and the reality of his neighborhood and hometown would be slightly different from what he would have expected, right? And Quentin's sort of sense of uh, the ideals of what he gained from the Harvard education might be shattered with the ongoing sort of problems with the racial issues that are happening in his hometown, right, nonetheless, right, which is sort of uh, divested or uh, sort of, uh, sort of, uh, 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 not in line with sort of the Ivy League education that he might have gotten in the uh, Ivory Tower, right? And the uh, sort of disillusionment that he received from uh, returning to his hometown and seeing sort of the uh, so the reality right, versus sort of the ideal education that he might have received right, uh, while at Harvard, right? That we might have been able to see as well. Again, uh, sort of. Uh, Again, a lot of uh, sort of the uh, ideals and reality uh, sort of dealt in Odyssey, right? In a lot of texts that we might be able to find, right? With Hemet's Tale uh, that we might be able to find, right? <laughs> of Brave New World as well, uh, that we might be able to find the Bolusta Antigone. Uh, that we might be able to find. But again, uh, the sense of the brave new world as well, where we would have a more positive outlook about the future with how the genetic engineering, cloning, technology advances, we might, a lot, uh, some, a lot of the people might actually have a positive outlook about these sort of advancements, but brave new world would be sort of uh, warning us about some of the uh, sort of, uh, uh, yeah, the potential sort of, uh, effects like 1984 as well like with the big brother surveillance of the actions or even uh the brave new world right the ideals about the future of how genetic engineering scientific advancements and technology might um uh the future with all those components might not be as bright as we uh we would like it to be or that we assume or we predict it to be so raising that sort of um Warnings about how that might look, right? And also allowing us to have a more sort of realistic sort of outlook on uh, the future of society and how technological advances would turn out to be, right? It is also some of the predictions that many of these authors would have made in these books, right? That we might have been able to see as well, right? Um, so again, uh, we can take a look at a couple more, couple more sort of texts that we might be able to see. Uh, <clears throat> the next, uh, uh, so the next uh, assignment. Uh, so again, more uh, sort of texts and passages that we might be able to see. Uh, but the next assignment would be sort of uh, uh, would be about the poem, the landlady, right? That uh, page would have written about a poem for. 
there's a, a uh, there are a lot of sort of famous works about the landlady with uh, sort of the uh, the short story by Royal Dell, where the landlady would be sort of murdering the guests in the house, right? Uh, sort of the foreshadowing of that and sort of the uh, power dynamics that are involved, right, with the uh, illusion of the uh, sort of the murder, right, and the detective component uh, that we find as well. Also, crime and punishment, the landlady murdered the uh, uh, was murdered again. It's uh, sort of the reverse order by Raskolnikov, right? Ominous nature or foreshadowing that we find here as well. But here, uh, the landlady. Let's take a look at how uh, the topic is explored, right? With by Page, right? Which is often a topic that many of the authors sort of uh, turn to. Uh, but here we do find uh, <clears throat> the uh, sepia, right? Uh, click. Craving camera with the C alliteration, the S alliteration, silent swallowing silently, right? The surreptitious, secretive in tone, right? They might be able to find. And the landlady, the world, the illusions of uh, other pieces of literature where landlady signified a central character, right? They might be able to find. And uh, sort of different, uh, uh, again, uh, sort of prime dynamics for crime and punishment, and also world, though, that we might be able to find about the landlady. Uh, but again, like uh, nothing's unprepared, a little bit of uh, sort of perfectionism that we find, uh, cryptic, <laughs> again, a lot of alliteration that we might be able to find, pads, patient, pulse, right, with the rhythm and sort of the suspense, right, that might be built, uh, that, that might be built with these alliteration, dream, dope, drink, right, again, sort of the, uh, the tone, uh, movement, right, that we might be able to find. Come home late, rooms for clues, again, of surveillance or ominous tone in other sense when they're quiet, jumps when they move, right? Tremble snow, again, jaywalks their street, clumsy shoes, a little bit of ominous sort of spooky sort of sense, right? Omni uh, omniscient in some sense, right? Uh, that we might be able to find, right? All knowing they tell us, right? So again, to build rhythm, these alliteration sounds, right? Uh, cleaners, curvature, content, right? See alliteration, clean cut, perfectionism, right? They might be able to find. Uh, here also that yet knows them better than their closest friends. So again, intimacy that we might be able to find. Objects like private mail photographs, right? Books, right? They might be able to find. And cleaners, uh, curvature, content, again, see alliteration. Uh, but and also like a lover, so like a closest friend, like a lover, the intimacy that we find, right? No all omniscient sort of sense of the landlady. Uh, she prays that she would catch the unprepared last draft of word of the skulls, hoping the worst, so sets the ominous tone once again, right? Hoping for the worst, so again, juxtaposition, irony, a little bit of spooky in tone, right? They might be able to find. With many of the texts like Crime and Punishment and the Royal Doll, right? When it comes to landlady, a little bit of a spooky sort of, uh, twist or turn irony that they uh, explore in these texts, right, which uh, might be uh, sort of noteworthy or worthwhile sort of uh, theme to uh, explore in one of your uh, essays as well, right, they might be able to find borrowers and privacy, right, again, uh, sort of looking in, sort of surveilling, right, surveillance, right, sort of uh, uh, following and sort of uh, 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 sort of taking a look, right, stocking in some sense, but again, the sort of spooky nature that we might be able to find. Uh, the last sort of uh, topic that we'll take a look at would be the idea of deception and how uh, the character might be deceiving one another here that we might be able to see. So Anna Karina, Beloved, Crime and Punishment, Doll's House, or Heart of Darkness, Great Gatsby, Hamlet, Jane Eyre, of deception that we might be able to find. Uh, <clears throat> here, Jane Eyre, uh, the, the idea of deception is that the woman, right, the hidden wife the care, uh, of the, uh, the, the mad woman in the dungeon would be hidden, right? And so the idea of uh, sort of, uh, the idea of uh, sort of uh, deception might be explored here as well. In Hamlet, a lot of deceit is played out with the idea of control for power and prestige and kingmanship. Right, a lot of deception involved in politics, right, that we might be able to find. Uh, who paid his cash uh, cost of medical uh, treatment that we might be able to find? Again, <clears throat> in, uh, in uh, a doll's house, right, uh, Nora keeps uh, 
uh, a secret from Torvald, his house, her husband, about where uh, she had gotten money for the payment of his uh, sur cost for his surgery uh, that he would have gained from another man. And so again, deception is played. And also their the relationship dynamics might be influenced by what is kept uh, away or kept as a secret from the other, right? They might be able to explore here as well. Uh, also, in uh, The Great Gatsby, the deception of uh, who he is, right, that uh, Gatsby would be disclosing his identity to uh, Daisy only after, right, at a certain time. So the idea of uh, sort of deception or withdrawing identity might be explored as well. Uh, Heart of Darkness of the deception that Kurtz also plays, right, with the idea of not revealing his sort of self-identity to others, but it might be portrayed here as well. And uh, the Crucible, McCarthyism, Abigail, deception, right, that we might be able to find as we would be able to see here as well. Right, so again, deception, ideas of deception might be portrayed in uh, some of the texts, especially with Shakespearean sort of texts. Uh, with the idea of uh, sort of uh, uh, perhaps uh, not wanting to hurt the feelings of others, but also uh, misleading certain people in certain sense or with Shakespearean themes, right? With, uh, with, with themes of politics of power, the idea of deception might be portrayed as uh, also as a sort of uh, uh, a tool to build a mystery and a uh, sort of surveillance of uh, suspense, right? That we might be able to find as well. And so we'll take a look at more AP sort of uh, texts and also SAT text or passages, right? That we'll be taking a look at in our future sort of videos that we'll be taking a look at as well.